Hello friends, Dr. Larry Mittenall, your friendly neighborhood child and adult psychiatrist. I'm always um, honored to be in front of you and for us to kind of talk about things that are important to you. So today, um, today I am going to go over a question that I often uh, get and hopefully this helps you as well, um, which is, um, should I be thinking about a career in, in mental health um, or, you know, it, wh whether it be psychiatry, psychology, uh, therapy of some kind, or just, you know, other avenues for for wellness, so you might have heard of you know coaching, um, both in terms of life coaching or executive coaching, where you're you know maybe working in a business uh, setting and helping a team to be more uh, cohesive. So whatever um, wherever you are, kind of on that spectrum, um, you're wondering, okay, what are the reasons that people get drawn in? What are the things that interest them? What are the things that ring true maybe in people in this field that might help me to sort out? where I stand. And so you're going to get my top three. So you want to hang on and we'll go through them. And hopefully that helps to clarify um, for you, is this a space that I want to be in? Is this a space where I can find joy and fulfillment in helping others reach their success? All right, and before we get into it, don't forget to like, subscribe, or hit the notification bell below. Um, you probably aren't surprised to hear this, but everything has a psychology, including the YouTube algorithm. And by doing that, you allow us to grow and find uh, a way to reach other people who may be looking for this type of information, looking for ways to thrive or to work on their own kind of mental wellness too. So I appreciate your work in the mission by doing those simple things. Thanks so much, and let's get into it. All right, so my first reason for uh, maybe considering wellness, considering psychiatry, considering psychology, um, would be understanding yourself, right? Um, you've heard, you know, to thine own self be true. Um, you've heard physician heal thyself. I mean, what are those things asking you but to do a little bit of self-reflection, right? And and better understand your makeup. Um, what are the things that, that interest you or that you like? Um, what are some of the biases that your brain has um, when it comes to making certain types of decisions, whether it's, you know, relationship or, you know, emotion-wise, or or um, or the things that, that you're most interested in and so I think a lot of people who work in this space um, not in necessarily a narcissistic way but it's hard not to look at diagnostic criteria and to work with other people's you know pain and suffering and helping them to make sense of it that it doesn't cause you to take a moment to pause and reflect about your own life now you're not always doing that every time that you sit down with someone but there are many more opportunities to do that for self-reflection and growth so even if you take it no further than that, than just self-reflection, you're already a step ahead in the in the game um, because the temptation, of course, in life is to just live through it um, rather than to pause and take time um, to reflect on it. Um, but if you do take it, you know, the next step forward, then often in training, um, you're paired with a supervisor who helps you to understand maybe how your feelings can be used productively as clues to um, certain ways of thinking or helping you to find solutions in your life. So again, one reason, why don't you consider, uh, one more reason to consider uh, doing this or thinking about this as a, as a field, as an avocation, um, is maybe to understand yourself better. And here's the, here's the wonderful part. If you engage on that road and you decide not to go through with, you know, getting a medical degree or getting a PhD, um, you've known and learned a little bit more about yourself. And isn't that worth the time and effort? Number two, you're going to be asking yourself and other people are going to be asking you, why did they do that, right? <laughs> for the rest of your life. Um, for the rest of your life, if you're a person in the world, um, in relationships, working at a business, working within an organization, working at a church, you know, participating in some volunteer activity, um, you know, people are always going to be, you know, puzzling to you. And so um, when you work in this space, uh, you start to organize at least kind of theories and certainly you start to learn theories of, of human interaction and behavior. Now, this doesn't mean, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a, uh, a disclaimer here, that doesn't mean that you'll understand every action, that everything that happens, every you know tragedy, every joy in the world, you'll be ready with the perfect explanation to understand it all. However, I do think there are so many patterns that you see in human nature that you can start to put that together and get better and better at, um, at making those types of predictions or maybe understanding people 
Um, and I think the more senior that you get, certainly when I talk to you know people who have been doing the work that I do for many, many years, I see wisdom. I see wisdom in their ability to pull out patterns that you know sometimes aren't as apparent to me. And certainly when I compare myself now to um, the person I was outside of uh, residency and training, um, those things have become easier too. So understanding other people is just really, really cool. And so one more reason to consider working or doing something that furthers your knowledge in this space. All right, and number three is actually maybe big, bigger than the other two in that um, I think studying psychiatry and working in it for sure um, certainly adds an element to the way that you perceive the world. And you might not say, you know, it's necessarily, you know, richer or more complex, but it certainly has its own interesting window um, that makes everyday interactions and even some of the media and movies and stories that you consume or, or that you witness and, and watch um, really, really interesting. I mean, uh, when you think about, you know, the Hunger Games, okay, what is the psychology that gets us to a dystopian future in which we're sacrificing our children um, for the sake of humanity? Are there any correlates to you know things that are going on um, today, both here or around the world, or that sort of thing? Um, again, you know, all those things sound really sci-fi and removed, but from a psychological lens, um, seeing how people you know suffer, deal with pain, um, and um, in a healthy way or unhealthy way, um, you know, it lends to a really interesting perspective on um, both humanity and trying to understand those things and understanding um, those stories. Um, or you know, maybe you watch. Um, What's that show? My Hero Academia and wonder, you know, Deku's determination, is that healthy or unhealthy? Um, at least for those in the first season. I'm not going to ruin the, I'm not going to ruin the show. But, you know, there are some psychological things that also are themes in the show um, that make it kind of interesting um, to watch or to think about. Also, uh, sometimes it's a little bit of a spoiler um, if you're sitting with a psychiatrist listening to um, a podcast or, or watching a movie um, where, uh, where there is a psychiatric diagnosis that's part, of the, that's part of the mix. Now, sometimes it's not perfectly portrayed, um, and maybe if you want me to do videos like that, we can talk through um, you know, common uh, media tropes and, uh, and do they do a good job of you know, representing what mental illness um, or struggles can feel like, but um, but it is really funny and fun sometimes um, to be a psychiatrist and kind of watching these films and thinking that's not quite the diagnosis. Or I knew that you know this was a split personality the entire time. Um, so anyway, I hope that's been helpful for you in thinking about um, all right, where do I fit? Are these things are are these things that speak to my heart, and are there things that make um, the field sound more interesting to me, at least interesting enough that I want to take an extra psychology class or, um, or, or take an elective rotation if you're a medical student watching this um, to that uh, can help broaden my experiences. So, all right, my friends, you've been great. Take good care. Be well. All right. Until the next time we see each other. Thank you.